Good evening, ladies and gents. Let's do this. All right. Today we're going to talk about never before released nutrition truths and performance hacks that you may have heard me talk about before, but more than likely not, because these are going to be new. So I'm going to give everyone just a few minutes to kind of trickle in for a moment, just giving my replay viewers a heads up as to what's going on. And hey, if we're not connected, the best place to connect with me is to go to thinkgreatloseweight.com and register on our email list so you can get the replays and you can get a ton of other information that I put out. Hey, what's up, Sarah? Welcome to each of you. Hope you've had a fantastic day. I appreciate you taking time to invest it with me and most importantly, invest it in yourself. So I've got some things planned for today and as always, I love to hear your questions and uh, what concerns that you may have. So if there are any specific things you would like some information on or you would like for me to discuss, now is the time to post them. So if this is your first, hey, what's going on, Kathleen? If this is your first time connecting with me, welcome. I'm grateful for you. And I am here solely to support and serve you at my highest level. What's happening? And I'm grateful for you taking the time to invest it, whether you're watching it live right now or whether you're watching it from the replay. I appreciate it. And what the best way you could thank me if you choose to do so for something that you get value out of is to share my information with your family, with your friends, with your loved ones, because uh, my mission is to serve 200 million people. And it's going to start with me serving each one of you and making a difference in your life and you feeling compelled or called to share it with people in your life. Frozen. No time to be frozen. So, hey, so with that in mind, do any of you have any specific things that you would like for me to discuss before I kind of start talking about some things? And welcome. If you did not catch my video that I did on Saturday, go back into my feed and check it out. I did a live grocery store presentation live from the grocery store, obviously, but getting into a lot of different stuff on brain functioning, on detoxification, on better lung and breathing, like all kinds of stuff. So let's get going. Does anyone have any questions specifically, like anything you would love more information on? What's up, Travis Dillard? Question on the table is, is do you have any pain, symptoms, or illnesses right now that you would love information on before I start kind of digging into some stuff? Let's go on Lindsay Willis Perez, Stacy Wise Lerma. It's been a little while since I've seen you. So, all right. So I'm going to go ahead and just start talking about some stuff. And if you had any questions, what's going on, Mary? You can definitely uh, just... Uh, feel free to drop them in the message box and I'll gladly answer them for you. What's up, Emma Kate, Terry, Tyler, Jero? Pleasure to see you faces. All right, so we're going to talk about a few things right now and we're going to talk about one specifically. We're going to talk about energy sources. And we're talking about energy sources. What's going on, Shelly? We're going to talk about specifically, we're going to talk about carbohydrates and fats because I think it's really important to understand um, when to use certain ones and most importantly understanding what's going to match up with your goal now if you've never had a one is anyone else have a bad connection so hopefully I'm coming through live and okay is everyone else having an issue or is everyone else having a good picture or can hear me okay if you can hear me okay just type a yes or a one if I have a bad connection then I may have to start over so if you can hear me okay Type a one or a yes. All right, I'm keep on. I'm gonna keep on rolling. Yes. All right, awesome. So types of energy: carbohydrates and fats. The most important thing to consider is this: is ultimately what is your goal? What's your outcome? What's your desire? What are you choosing to create in your health and wellness? And once you figure that part out, you get to figure out what's going to be the proper strategy for me to get there. Now, I'll be honest with you. I've been 250 pounds three different times. So I've been really fat 
and been really lean and got on stage and won trophies and money and first place trophies and all kinds of stuff. So I assure you, no matter where you're at, if you are willing to do the work, you too are capable of doing the same thing. And a lot of times it can be really frustrating. Uh, I can just tell you from my own personal experience, I'm 38 currently, and from 30 to 38, my body has changed significantly. The things that I used to do to produce results would no longer work. So I've had to do sometimes more drastic means. Like right now I'm doing no carbohydrates directly unless there's some trace in some of my foods. I'm doing no carbs at all for four days and I'm only doing fats, proteins, and vegetables. I'll have a spike day on my fifth. So this is pretty extreme for me because I would cut them low 30 to 60 grams a day. But going on zero is a little bit different. Tom. And just so you know, some of you may know this, but I lost 50 pounds in two and a half months before when I was in college. And I swear to you, I would never do that again. <laughs> I did the I was doing the Atkins diet, which is fats and proteins. I was doing two 45 minute sessions of cardio a day, one in the morning on the empty stomach and then another one at night before I actually lifted weights. And here's something really interesting. I literally barely knew my head from my butt. I was in finals. I was taking finals in school and I'm not even joking. I read Question number one for 45 minutes because I would get two words down and forget what I read. That's how fried my brain was. Now, this is also when I was 21, 22 years old. There's a lot of things I've learned since then and there are healthier ways that you can do an Atkins and everyone knows an Atkins. Atkins is just the guy who invented or came up with and popularized the whole fats and proteins or the ketosis process. Um, I'm a huge fan of it and it really just depends on what your goal is and where your current level of fitness is as to whether you would implement something like that. Someone who is diabetic, someone who has inflammation issues, someone who is fighting disease and is fighting symptoms, uh, ketogenic diets a lot of times are a really good idea. Uh, fruits have a lot of benefits as well. It's just understanding what works specifically for you. Okay, So one of the things to consider is this. It's important to understand when you burn certain types of fuel, like when you burn carbohydrates or when you burn fats, okay? Zone one, has anybody ever heard of zone one? What can I eat to help inflammation in my joints? Okay, Andrew, I'll adjust up. Inflammation. Has anybody ever heard of zone one cardio or zones period? Zone one, zone two, zone three, zone four. If you have, just say yes. If you have not, say no. No. Okay. So far we got a no. Uh-oh. Lost my paper. Hang on. So no. Question on the table is have you ever heard of zones? Meaning zone one, zone two, zone three, zone four. Tyler. All right. No. Terry. Okay. All right. So let's talk about this. And change my little song here. So, all right. So here we go. So zones are referring to cardio. That's what I'm talking about, Chris. Cardio zones, everyone's cardio zone is different. You can literally go on Google and type in Carvonin, K-A-R-V-O-N-E-N, and you can put in your own pulse rate and your own stuff, and you can literally figure out what your zones are. Now, there is a lot of back and forth on post on EPOC or post-exercise oxygen consumption and how HIIT training does this and that. It all has its benefits. It's about finding what works best for you and your body type and where you're at on your journey. Okay? Welcome, Kristen. So zone one for me, which means my body, my heart rate is at 118 to about 128 beats a minute. Everyone's is different. Now, zone one for me is a good pace on the elliptical or a treadmill. I'm on an elliptical, I've got about an eight on the resistance. And on a treadmill, I'm at about an 8 to 10 grade at about 3 miles an hour. Now, what zone 1 means is that that's when my body is using predominantly fat for fuel. This is important. If you are trying to burn fat and you are busting your ass, what's going on, Colleen? Busting your ass to where you're like, <laughs> and you're huffing and puffing, you are not burning fat at all. Okay? And this is the reason why. In order for your body to utilize fat for fuel, we have to have a lot of oxygen 
present, meaning being able to breathe to actually turn on our fat burning mechanism. That's why walking is one of the best forms of fat. That's why you see a lot of bodybuilders getting ready for shows doing walking on the treadmill. Now, it's all depending on what you're looking for and what you're looking to create. Okay, And also, too, there's a very valid point of doing HIT training, which is high-intensity interval training. It's all about understanding when to change those frequencies up, right? Now, let's talk about zone two. So zone two is obviously right after zone one. My zone two is a 128 to about 138 to 139. It's a little bit more of a hump. I have less oxygen coming in because I'm breathing a little heavier, which means when I'm breathing a little bit heavier, I am changing my fuel source. Yeah, I am changing my fuel sources. So zone two and zone three is glycolytic, which is carbohydrate or sugars. And this is important. Potentially muscle if your nutrition program is not set up to support what your body needs. What's going on, Steve? The relationship coach right there. If y'all need anything from Steve, there he is. The man, the myth, the legend. What's up, Mandy? Um, So understanding the different zones of cardio that apply to what you are trying to do is very important. So you also understand how to pair your nutrition. Okay, when I say how to pair your nutrition, if you're gonna go train, like we'll just use me for example, because I can relate to me and that's what I do. If say for example, when I go do martial arts training, like if I'm doing jujitsu, if we're actually rolling and then you're going full speed, then you are using a lot of muscle, a lot of cardiovascular, a lot of cardiovascular oxygen and blood flow. So some things that I would eat, I would eat more proteins and carbohydrates before I went in there so that my body had the fuel to produce the activities, okay? I wouldn't go in there and have, well, I'm doing fats and proteins now, but that's just because my diet is adjusted. But if I was really looking to get in there and have a lot of energy and have a lot of focus and make sure that my body was primed, if you're doing some type of pretty intense activity, Carbohydrates and proteins is going to be one of your best ways to make sure that you're maximizing your ability to perform, okay? Now, after you train, after you do weights, after you do an intense activity, one of the most important fuel sources to replenish is your carbohydrates to put the glycogen back into your muscle. It's also just as important to put protein in there so you're able to fuel your body with the nutrients that it needs to make sure that it's able to grow and repair what we just broke down, okay? There are things you can take like in between your workouts or while you're walking around in between your sets or whatever, Brian, is the brain. Oh, thank you, my man. Um, Also, there are some things you can drink called branch chain amino acids. Those are amazing, especially if you're cutting calories and cutting nutrients to drop body fat. Branch chain amino acids will give you the substance that your muscles can use so your body doesn't convert and doesn't start to start taking your muscle tissue and breaking it down. That is really important. What I've found, and this is coming from working with over 40,000 people, probably more than that at this point, um, I have found that most people don't eat enough. A lot of times when I go do my nutrition programs and have my coaches redo them, they have me eating more. I'm like, ugh, I don't want to eat more. I'm tired of eating. (laughs) It's like, can we just eat less? It's crazy. No, a lot of times you can't because when you eat less, your body thinks that it's starving. If your body for a second thinks that it's starving, it's burning your muscle tissue and storing your fat. That's one of the important reasons I keep getting body language, body language, body language. That's one of the most important that's one of the most important um, reasons to check your body. I'm not sure what you mean by IF, John. Let me know and I'll answer for that for you. Um, one of the most important things to do is to check your body fat weekly. If you're truly looking to not waste your time and maximize your effort, make sure you measure your body fat weekly because here's the deal. I used to talk to some people that would only measure their body fat once a month. Here's the problem with that. What happens if you are off track on day three and you're having a portion size that's off and you think you're doing amazing and you're putting in all this time doing cardio and you're like man i've done a kick ass month and then you get to measure and your body fat is up and your muscles down you're like oh my gosh yes there is a little bit of an age factor 
Oh my gosh, I've been wasting all this time. Yes, that's why you check your body fat once every five to seven days. If you are off and your body's burning your muscle tissue, you can literally make one adjustment, tweak one meal, and you will literally be back on top. I highly encourage you to do that. That is for sure one of the exact things that I do. When I work with my clients all around the world, I work with them and they check their body fat weekly so that when we get on our Skype calls or whatever calls we're doing, I have that information to make decisions to help them out. What's up, Lori? <clears throat> Does age factor in burning fat? I believe age has a definite factor because I can tell you from my own experience, my body has changed immensely from 30 to 38 and if your hormones go down, your body's just less active. Like I put on my like man weight, I say. Like I was probably 200 easily, more than that, but I could easily hold 200 pounds. What's up, Frank? When I was 20 years old, when I got into my 30s and 32s and actually 26 years old, I put on an easy 20 or 30 pounds of just dense muscle and weight because my metabolism slowed down. What's up, Frank? So, did that make sense on your cardio and zone one, meaning you're going to burn fat because that's what zone one burns as fuel. Zone two, zone three is going to be carbohydrates. That's when you have less oxygen. One of the best ways to talk about this, there's something called the Borg's rate of perceived exertion, which means when you're having a conversation and you're talking, if you're trying to burn fat, if you can't talk, you're going too fast. If you can talk and you can hold a good conversation and you're breathing and you're, and you're nice and fluid, then you're in a good zone. The best thing I would encourage you to do, A, is to check out the Carvone and formula. That way you can figure out exactly where you're at. And the, the tools that I'm sharing with you right now is how to work right versus working hard. There's a massive difference. A lot of people work really hard and they're not mastering the basics and therefore they're wasting their time. So understanding what that means for you um, is a big deal. Decided to get younger a few years back. Yeah, I got it. Best way to get back in, back into the gym and what zone should one focus on after surgery is definitely zone one. You may even just start with some basic yoga depending upon what kind of surgery you've had. Uh, what kind of surgery have you had? Hey, it's my mom. <laughs> hey, mom. How you doing? Love you. So right now we're talking about cardio and we're talking about fat burning zone and how walking is one of the best things for you. And here's something else for you too. So this is a Fitbit. This is one of my favorite tools that I share with my entrepreneurs and I make them get one as part of their tuition. This little gadget is constantly on me except when I'm asleep so I don't have that electrical gadget just blasting off on my gallbladder, my liver. Um, what that little piece of tool, that little tool does for me is it actually gives me data to let me know how active I've been during the day. So I know if I need to walk more, I need to know if I need to cut some calories or whatever. It gives me a great identifier as to how I'm functioning. Shoulder surgeries, one hip and lumbar spine. How long have you been out of surgery and did you do rehabilitation? So your objective is is how can you create an amazing life doing as little work as possible? Like there's a program that I did called Fitness Entrepreneur Secrets or Fitness Travel Secrets on our website. And basically, yes, basically what I did is I created a whole 32 video set for people that travel on what to eat, how to pack, what it looks like when you pack what foods to take, what you would take to help if you actually fell into a glass of wine or two with your with your compadres while you're out in your business meetings, whatever that looks like. I did all of this in a video format and then I put 12, yeah, I just talked about BCAAs. I'll talk about it again in a second. I put 12 workout videos in there that are all body weight. I'm talking like I didn't move out of the spot that I was in and literally I was sweating my ass off. I was drenched in four minutes of actual work. So there is a massive difference between lifting weights and working muscles. A huge difference. For a long time, coming up from a bodybuilding background, I used to lift a lot of weights and just ridiculous amounts of weights. And then I realized, I'm like, there's no, there's no need for that. If you can stimulate, hey, John, if, if hey, John, you and I didn't get to connect yet, bud. Um, 
Ma- lifting weights versus working muscles, like I don't lift heavy weights anymore and I could easily stay the same size that I am just because I understand what to do with my food and how to stimulate muscles. So understanding that is, is a huge difference between you working right versus working hard and also injury prevention, which is a really big deal because I assure you this, as I've gotten into doing more martial arts stuff, I have consistently had some type of nagging injury, it seems. And as I am growing older and graceful, uh, my body seems to be just a smidge bit slower on healing and I know all the cool gadget tricks and things like that. So I assure you, prevention is the key. Make sure you're taking care of yourself. And let's talk about inflammation for a second. We'll talk about branched chain amino acids. So branched chain amino acids, I just discussed this a few minutes ago, are really important. I think that they're really helpful because while you're trying to drop calories or you're trying to drop your body fat, you're going to have to be in a restricted calorie basis. Branched chain amino acids will give your muscle something to use for fuel other than breaking down your muscle for fuel. Because obviously, anytime your body gets catabolic, catabolic means it's breaking down your muscle, anabolic, think anabolic steroids, that's building. Anytime we get catabolic or where our body's breaking down muscle, we're going to store fat. As soon as that happens, you're going to store fat. So it's really the key is finding that magic threshold and measuring it on a weekly basis so you can make adjustments on there. So we're going to talk about inflammation as I get a little water here. Mom, are you still on? Did you figure out how to type? So let's talk about inflammation. Inflammation, like if you get an opportunity, go back to my Facebook page and look at the video that I created. It says, back in the kitchen, making something strong. And man, it was sure strong and tasted like dookie. It worked though. So what I did, and this is for my inflammation person, um, as I took ginger, what's up Gail? And I took turmeric. And I literally took like a four inch piece of both of them and I shaved them down to where all it was was just the little, the I'd say the, it looks like a little wooden, orange wooden stem and so does the ginger. I took both of them, threw them in my juicer, I put a little bit of an orange in there and I put a little bit of OJ because man, that Goldschlager is hot. The long story short, here's the deal. If you have pain, and you do the ginger and turmeric like I did, it's an amazing painkiller. Like it's the top two painkillers on the planet. And what they do is they inhibit COX-2 production. What's up, Joshua? So when you get an Advil or an Aleve, COX-2 is what those are are inhibiting from being produced. So your pain goes away. Now, not only does your pain go away, but here's the things you get to consider is that you've heard me talk about this, and I mentioned this on the video that I did Saturday at the grocery store talking about how turmeric, in my opinion, is what's called as a panacea. A panacea is like a cure-all. Like It's so that freaking amazing that uh, I'm surprised that more people don't know about it, But but... Um, or and turmeric is the orange flavor that is in curry. That's curcumin. That is huge in India. And did you know the Indian people have like a, we have, I forgot, I choose to remember. Um, their incident of breast cancer and prostate cancer is like alarmingly low. <laughs> Ours is off the charts from all the processed foods and all the animal foods and things that we eat and plastics and things like that. But in India, it's way more polluted than here, and their breast and prostate cancers are dramatically lower, and they believe it's because of the turmeric. Now, the turmeric is a blood cleanser. It helps with arthritis. It helps with breaking down amyloid lesions that happen and turn our brain into Alzheimer's and the different part of it. Turmeric in pill form, I would do... Um, I would do the real deal as much as you can. And you have always juice. Uh, I, I juice these. I typically will blend. What's up, Derek Conde, my brother from, from high school. Uh, I used to, I juiced these. I typically recommend blending because you're going to get a lot more of the stuff. Uh, I did a video about maca, Sharon, like not even two days ago. Check it out on my Facebook page. We'll talk about maca for a second. So maca is your top endocrine modulator, meaning it helps to balance out your hormones. It's found 14,000 feet in the air in the Andes Mountains. It's the highest of any food source that we have on the planet. Extremely potent for adaptogens, meaning it helps our body to adapt to stressful situations. It also is a member... Hey, it's Penny too. Hey, babe, my mom's on. <laughs> um, 
It's also a member of the cruciferous vegetable family, meaning it has I3Cs, which is an endo-3 carbonyl. That is one of the most potent active ingredients for helping reverse cancers. Now also too, in maca, if you get the red maca root, it is the highest in zinc. And we have five minutes, so if you got any questions, let them rip. Um, maca root, the red maca root, is highest in zinc. Now here's the important thing, and this is why soy is not good for you. Soy, if it's unfermented, has phytates in it. Phytates will block our ability to absorb zinc, calcium, magnesium, all of the things that we need. So if you're feeding a baby soy, that is a bad idea. Bad idea to feed baby soy because those hormones are really, really potent and small babies are magnified because they're so small. What do you think of adaptogen in pill form? Uh, what's up, Dexter, Kyle? I honestly... I recommend doing, it depends on because there's a lot of different adaptogens in different formulas. It just depends on what it is. If it's like Rishi or if it's like, uh, they have a bunch of different ones. Like I have someone here too. Shy Legit. Mark McDermott. Hey brother, I just saw you again, man. Uh, you have Rishi Mushroom, Purple, purple Orchard. Um, Mumio Extract is amazing. Vitamin C. Like it just depends on what it actually is and what you're looking for. But back to maca root for a second. Uh, maca root is amazing for ladies who are battling osteoporosis issues because it balances out hormone production. So their testosterone and estrogen levels get balanced out so their body starts eating or stops eating um, their bone structure, which is important. So inflammation. What's up, my friend? How are you? Um, hey, Dexter. So let's talk about inflammation for a second. And ladies and gents, we literally have about three minutes and 15 seconds. So if you have any specific questions that you would love for me to answer, just fire them off. Uh, what's in your best smoothie for weight loss, Brian? You know, bud, uh, there's going to be a lot more to that question because I don't really make weight loss smoothies. It's really about how your nutrition is structured over the day. If you're serious about making some adjustments, man, uh, shoot me a message, Steve, and I'll set up a conversation. Because here's the deal. Smoothies are great, and if you don't have your ma your macronutrients, like if you don't have your proteins, carbs, and fats balanced out for what your body needs, um, <laughs> yes, I find myself, yes it is, this is I will and this is I can, this is why my nose is doing this the whole time, I will, I can, we haven't even had a body language conversation in a long time, have we? It's probably about time for one, we've been talking about a lot of nutrition this month, yeah. I will, I can, I'm seeing differently, okay? So it's important to understand your macronutrient balance, like how much proteins, carbs, and fats you need. Like that is the most valuable piece of information you could ever know. It's like knowing your social security number because when you understand that, then you understand how to prepare your foods. You understand when you go to a restaurant how much you actually need. You know what your body functions best off of. You can have pizzas and cupcakes and get shredded and ripped at the same time because you understand how to use those numbers and employ them to your benefit. What's going on, Christian? So, inflammation. We talked about that. One of the two main things is ginger and turmeric. That smoothie that I made is very potent and it is very um, burning of your throat and it is very young, meaning it's very heating. So it will literally, you'll feel it go down your throat and into your stomach and it will light you up like a candle. What's going on, Matt? So hey, if we're not connected on Facebook, if you're not connected with me, uh, my whole body hurts after a day's work. Yeah. If we're not connected, go to thinkgreatloseweight.com. Uh, connect with us on our email list so I can send you some amazing videos. Um, actually, if you register now, you'll actually get the top seven of my most popular videos. And here's the thing. If you have followed me for a while, I'm grateful for you and I appreciate you. And I'm and my what I do, I do what I do to help you do better at what you do <laughs> and do and do and do. <laughs> um, if you're truly looking to take your wisdom of how to implement foods to the next level, Seriously, check out our uh, nutrition empowerment training. It's down to $199 from $499. It's, it's only up for about the next probably week. What's going on, Sean? It has everything that you've ever heard me talk about in the six hours of digital training where you can stop and fast forward it. And you get into understanding why Kiwis reverse asthma, why you can eat the avocado seed to reverse plaque disease. If you are serious about reclaiming your health and getting into your best shape ever, 
I encourage you to take action now and invest in yourself. And trust me, it will be the best nutrition training you have ever done because I know and I've done it. So have an amazing night. That's all I got. And remember, if you don't make time for your wellness, you will make time for your illness. If you want to have a call with me one-on-one, message me. Bye.